we begin our journey to Grafton Underwood by looking as it is today from the air. A large circular woodland hides its existence and without any knowledge of this airbase you wouldn't know it was there. As we overlay the map it becomes apparent that this was a large communal area with all amenities provided. From cinema and theatre to an officers club and bar, dining areas and the list goes on. Now I do not profess to be an expert on this subject, just an observer who has taken the time to research and find the evidence. I do hope you enjoy this video as I did creating it. Thank you. Well, I was three or four bomb group, and it was stationed uh, at Grafton Underwood, England. And that was a little town about 90 degrees, I mean about 90 miles north of London. Now, here are the ground people. God bless the ground people. But nevertheless, they were going to go home. They had all the local girls all tied up because they were there every night and they got fresh eggs. Okay, fellas, roll out. We have a mission this morning. Strike in half an hour. Captain Kirk, Captain Thompson, Lieutenant Booster, Ackerson, Holloway, and Hawker scheduled at five. Stop it up. Sometimes I don't think those Jerry's got proper respect for us. Well, what do you expect, Buster? The way you shoot, you shoot. Yeah, look, you talk. You can hit a cow and climb with a bull pit. Yeah, well, how about those two Jerry's? I slapped down over Where was it the shower block? Well, there was there would there be shower blocks. Them. There are numerous. Yeah, you'll see, you'll see them when you go down there. On previous visits to the home of the 384th bomb group, I had only just scratched the surface. With the help of Peter Hopkins and Paul Mansfield, I would have a better understanding of this remarkable airbase. The map that Peter provided was a massive help in finding our way around the Grafton Woods. Yeah, yeah. But in the middle of these squares, you'll see these. Um, the centre piece where the pot belly stoves were, that's all they had to um, keep the, the accommodation warm. So it must have been quite cold, especially in our weather. Right. So we'll have a walk down here. Yep. And then you you explored, last time you were... We, we looked at the Foxy Cinema. Mm -hmm. yeah, I believe that was, here. that was right, wasn't it? The Foxy Cinema we yeah. found. Yeah. Um, the, 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 was, there was another building. Just As we look at the map, it all seemed pretty straightforward. However, what I miscalculated was the timing of my exploration, with months of heavy rain in the spring and followed by summer heat waves, which provided Grafton Woods the perfect conditions for the undergrowth to flourish quite extensively. Set of rooms over here, but as I say, we're going down here today to the centre, yep. and then we can. Um you know, we can explore some of this. It's such a huge area, there's no way we'll get round it. But if you look right down here, this was a WAF site. Oh, right. They had women on the yeah, base, yeah, so yeah. They, they must have been there. That must have been a pop. That, that would have made a pop, pop belly stove. So that's a pop belly coal, stove. Coal burning stove. Just in those trees, so people yeah, can actually see. There. 
sort of a... Um, and that's standing virtually in the middle of the hut. So careful around here with these nettles. Yeah. Ah, there we go. You can get a better view of it. There'll be more to look at. Yeah. So... Peter and Paul's valuable knowledge helped me discover many new places at this airbase. I was now ready to explore and document the home of the 384th Bomb Group. Welcome to the Foxy Cinema and Theatre. Well, as you can see, it's not here anymore, but uh, this is where it stood over 70 years ago at Grafton Underwood, US AAF Air Base, home to the 384th Bombardment Group, heavy. Once a majestic building stood here, providing entertainment for the men and women of this airbase. A bit of a escapism from their duties, especially more so the airmen who had to fly off in their B-17 bombers over Germany. Uh, this provided a bit of a break uh, and relaxation for them to see a bit of fun. This has actually undergone a couple of changes since it was built. When it was originally built uh, the doors were here. The doors were here, this was the main entrance um, and it was just a single brick wall and two struts and the struts were there because when they built the single wall by the time they got so high that wall would have been very precarious and it could have easily toppled over so they built a couple of struts to give it a bit of extra strength then they decided to put a wooden structure at the front of it sort of uh, boost the image a bit that was uh, rendered and obviously then the, the entrance point would be just somewhere here and uh, it even had a billboard, it had signage on the top. Oh, it looked very smart, very smart. It served its purpose. Yep, and just beyond there was the sergeant's or the mess hall. And then in that direction would have been the officers club, which we're gonna go and visit in a bit. To get around this airbase, you needed some form of transport and a transport that you didn't need to put fuel in. 
So it made sense to get yourself a bicycle. And that's exactly what the servicemen and women did. They would use these to get around the base, not necessarily just to come to the uh, Foxy Cinema or Theatre. It would probably go to other locations, take messages. It was the best form of transport. It was quick, clean and um, quiet as well. And where better to park your bike than in a bike rack? This was specifically put here for the Foxy Cinema and Theatre. So they come along, park the bikes up and walk straight up to the door. Perfect. Over 70 years old and they're still here. Amazing. Behind me, there's an old boiler house to provide hot water, steam for the local area. This is the main entrance to the officers club and the mess, the officers mess, was further behind. But this is where the officers would come and originally this was a covered canopy walkway which led from the road up to the doors. We'll take a look inside. Now I thought this would be a good time to give you some idea of the layout of the Officer Club buildings. One will have to exercise one's imagination somewhat from this point onwards, as all we have left is a concrete floor and a few clues as to where everything was. In addition, we have some rare photos to help our imagination picture how it looked so long ago. something to make note about. This strip of metal would have been originally in an upright position and probably most of you have already guessed. This was a boot scraper or a shoe scraper to get the mud off the officer's shoes because they weren't allowed to come in with dirty shoes. Still here, a bit bent but it's still here. Just here is a concrete hearth. Now just to look at this, amongst all the foliage and piles of earth and roots, just looks a bit out of place, doesn't it? But in actual fact, this is still in its original place. Around this concrete base, would have been a brick surround and parts of the brick are still here they're still there and I'm guessing probably most of it had collapsed and has gone that way or it might have gone this way and it was cleared away but this would have been an open fireplace not the pot belly stoves that um, you'd normally find on a house like this so at some stage an open fire was made on there. Keep those officers nice and warm. Just here is actually puzzling me a little bit. 
Now I've seen a photo of some nurses standing what I think is about here. Just in front of me there is a path, although most of it's gone, there's just remnants of it there. And that path would lead all the way down the side of the officers club. And I think it also went that way as well. But there is a photograph and on the side of the building it says officers club or either officers mess. I'm pretty certain it's club. And I think this is the very spot where those nurses stood over 70 odd years ago. Just over here is a blast shelter. They would come down here, there would have been some steps, a path which would have led in that direction and literally you turn left and you're in the bomb shelter. This was actually a blast shelter, not a bomb shelter, a blast shelter. There was no roof on these as far as I'm aware. You just got inside and ducked down. Where I'm standing now, I'd be behind the bar because the actual bar itself where the officers and the ladies would stand or sit at the stalls would have been about a yard in front, maybe a couple of yards in front, but this was basically the serving area. Behind me would have been the, the, the wall with all the plush leather inlays to the panelling. Uh, it did look very, very smart. And behind there, you'd have seen there's two doors either side. There was one that side, one this side. Going into those doors would have led you into the storeroom obviously where they kept all the barrels of beer or bottles of wine or whatever beverage they had at the time. And this is clearly indicated because you have a, a, a brick wall here. And at first I thought it was a path. Then I looked at the photos uh, from a different angle and I noticed that there was a building built at the back of the uh, bar lounge uh, sort of a lean-to type thing, almost like a, an afterthought. Where are we going to put the beer? Mm, that's a good idea. Yes, perhaps we might have to build something on the back. So anyway, this is where they stored all the uh, beverages. So it gave more room for the bar.
behind me, you'll see the boiler house. Uh, the boiler house that you saw earlier in the video. This will give you an idea to how close uh, the boiler house was to uh, the officers club, but not just the officers club. It was also close to the officers mess, um, the Foxy Cinema and Theatre, and beyond the boiler house on the other side, uh, there's a there's a, a large building which was the uh, uh, main mess hall, the dining room, uh, which would cater for hundreds of people. Very very large, uh, and in fact they also did uh, presentations there. Uh, that was the main place where they could um, provide enough space for everyone to come and see the presentations. Uh, that was a huge building, but sadly it's gone. Um, even the floor wh where the building was is virtually gone. It's, it's really hard to tell where it is, which is a shame really. All the roads that I've been walking down, this one, uh, the other one that led to the Foxy Theatre and Cinema, uh, the uh, Officers Club, they were all given names. The one I'm on at the moment is called Wall Street, um, possibly because there was a bank down here or this is where they um, got their spending money. Um, the one with the Foxy Cinema and Theatre, that was called the Broadway. So they're bringing a bit of America here to give them some creature comfort, to remind them of home. Quite touching, I thought. Quite touching. It was times like this as I walked down these old concrete roads that I remember why the airbase personnel acquired bicycles. This was a huge communal area. Still, it is nice to absorb the peaceful woodland and look out for more tempting trails, perhaps leading to some undiscovered treasures of this airbase. arrived at the location of the commanding officer's quarters. Bit of a giveaway isn't it? Here Bud J. Peasley, the commanding officer, the first commanding officer to take up residence here at Grafton Underwood for the 384th Bomb Group and right behind those bushes is where he lived. Let's go and have a look. Where I'm standing would have been the commanding officer's quarters. It's quite a long building and I'm actually standing in a hallway. Again, evidence 
that this was a doorway, but I know it was a doorway, but evidence that just down here is another boot scraper. Notice how this one has some nice looped design, obviously for someone special. As I walk down the hallway, there's another room here and another room there. Quite narrow when you think about it. And then I keep walking and then there's a, a larger area which could have possibly been for lounge. There are all different sorts of shaped uh, pot belly stove bases around this site. And this is the first one I've seen um, with this particular shape. And by the looks of it, this went in a corner. Obviously where room was a premium, we couldn't have it standing right in the middle. So it'd obviously go in a corner somewhere. Um, but this one, uh, is a bit of a decoy because what I'm looking at here is the traditional potbelly stove base which is just the rectangle one so I know this one didn't sit there definitely not Being a high-ranking officer on this site, you were given those extra privileges. And one of those privileges was having your own bomb shelter, literally right on your doorstep. Very convenient, especially if the sirens start going. Another one of those privileges for a high-ranking officer is to have your own toilet block, literally within another 15 feet. Here, where I'm standing here would have been the wash basins. And this is evident by just having uh, a pot glazed gully running down, which would have been took away or soak away. And then there are various cubicles here there's one here there's another one here and various other cubicles another one there and these would have been where the toilet pans would have gone and i'm guessing somewhere would have been the urinals as well but they seem to have long gone How often is it that uh, you roam the woods and find your own public convenience? Not very often. <laughs> In fact, this is part of a toilet block that I'm standing on now. And this is one of the urinals. And next door, there was a couple of cubicles for that privacy that you needed. Uh, and in this whole area, there were Nissan huts uh, everywhere. Three to four hundred yards down that way, 
and quite possibly two or three hundred yards that way, there were squadrons which had their own patch of land, so to speak. And they'd have all their living quarters here and their public convenience. Um, anyone who was based at this particular point would have had the commander just living about 50 yards away. <clears throat> so you'd have to be on your best behaviour. But yeah, it's still standing. Quite solid. A couple of chips here and there, but other than that, it's still here. Fantastic find. Where I'm standing now, used to stand a T2 type hangar. Huge thing, huge metal structure to be able to contain a B-17 bomber or whatever plane. But these were massive. They were huge and what you're looking at now is only probably about the third of the width of what this hangar was. The hangar, its length went that way and the width went that way and quite a lot of it has been covered by overgrown and shrubbery and stuff like that. But this was a colossal building. But all what's left is just concrete covered in lichen and uh, some very nice people have uh, cleared the lichen uh, to create uh, a space in the shape and obviously you can't see it here but you'll see it in a second um, for when I took the drone up and uh, took some video of it and uh, you'll see what it says. Hidden amongst all these trees, you come across buildings that are still standing, but only just. And one such building, which is behind me now, I don't know if you can see it, is the generator room. And this is where all your backup generator power was uh, made in the event that it was needed. Let's go and have a look. This was once the generator building and inside sat two generators. In the event they lost power from the grid to the airbase, they would fire up these two generators and keep essential services running. It's quite a large building actually. I'm not going to go inside because it's somewhat dangerous and the building is crumbling um, but if you look on my previous video uh, we did actually have a look inside 
Um, but anyway, next door to this building sat another building. And it's not a building that you would expect to find. Let's go and have a look. Right next to the generator building stood another building to the left and that building was a chapel. A chapel where servicemen and women would come and uh, especially before uh, bombing missions it gave the, the, the airmen a bit of comfort to make their peace with uh, their beliefs and their faith. To give you an idea of how difficult it is to find some of these places, here's a good example of where someone has cleared the carpet of 70 years of moss, leaves um, and the build up over the years which is almost like a turf, it's almost like a turf that has covered the concrete and guessing that once this was covered before it was removed you wouldn't have even known this was here but this gives you an idea of how difficult it is to find some of the locations but thankfully some very kind people have actually uh, moved it back to expose the concrete and what it was As I sit here, my thoughts of how this airbase looked so long ago provokes my curiosity even more. For many years I have been visiting these old woods, looking for clues to give me some idea of how these brave young men lived out their time at this airbase. One such time the Red Cross arranged the London child evacuees to a tour and a party enjoying an afternoon in the Fox's Cinema and Theatre. Young servicemen falling in love with local girls and some getting married. Even naming a B-17 bomber after a young lady called Gloria Diane attracted the attention of the local newspaper. Dances were commonplace and the local girls didn't need asking twice. Buildings that once thrived with activity have all but gone, leaving just concrete foundations slowly being eroded by nature. The sound of distant B-17s taking off is now replaced with just the sound of a graceful breeze amongst the trees. Soon, all that I have seen will be gone forever. I hope this short film will stand the test of time and preserve the life that once existed here at the home of the 384th.